ayang maghihil pero sa sinanganan alam ng puso sa dipid mo'y buhay lupang hinirang tuyan ka ng magiging sa manlulupi di ka pa sisihin sa dagat at bundok sa simoy at sa langit mong bukaw may hinagang tula at awit sa paglayang minamahal ang kisap ng matawat mo'y tagumpay na lang dinigning ang bituin na araw niya kailan pa may magdidinim lupa ng araw na walhati pagsinta buhay langit sa piling mo ang hinigaya na pag may mga api ang mamatay ng dahil sa'yo Lord, teach me to be generous. Teach me to serve you as I should. To give and not to count the cost. To fight and not to heed the wounds. To toil and not to seek for rest. And ask not for reward Save that of knowing That I do Your most holy As I should To give and not to count the cost To fight and not to heed the wounds To toil and not to seek for rest To labor and ask not for reward Save that of knowing That I Antiveros, and it is a pleasure to host and moderate the third Jose Totoy Averiana Memorial Lecture. This now annual lecture is mainly for students who are watching, uh, for them to gain a deeper understanding of current media issues and trends. Media professionals, academics, and opinion leaders share their research, knowledge, and expertise to invite reflection on the impact of communication industries on the people who consume its various products. The late Jose Totoy Avellana, for whom this lecture was named, was an ardent advocate of effective and persuasive communication as both an advertiser and an industry voice. He was an ardent nationalist who was passionate about how communication could be harnessed to spur a better to spur a better Philippines. Through the generous support of his family, a professorial chair in communication arts was established, which continues his advocacy for the responsible use of communication arts to improve Philippine society. The chair supports the scholarly work of researchers and teachers at Mr. Avellana's alma mater, the Ateneo de Manila University. Now, it also supports this annual lecture for the last three years, the Department of Communication has organized and staged the Jose Totoy Avellana Memorial Lecture, 
which brings us together virtually or else within this studio today. To welcome all of you to this event, please welcome the Dean of the Loyola Schools, School of Social Sciences, Dr. Charina Saloma Akpedonu. With the School of Social Sciences of the Loyola Schools of the Ateneo de Manila University, it is my distinct pleasure to welcome you to the third Jose Totoy Avellana Memorial Lecture. A pleasant morning to all. Here at the School of Social Sciences, we are promoting a way of practicing the social sciences that has at least three dimensions. One, fostering a sense of belonging to ensure the successful navigations of university spaces by those who study and work in the university. Two, translocal and transnational engagements as a way for us to understand our country better. And three, the problem-solving mode that highlights the role of social scientists in offering not only analysis or critique, but practical results that help systems and institutions be prepared for the next social problem. I foresee that today's panels will contribute to our understanding of the important role of the social sciences in showing that the point of communicating is to clarify our understanding rather than to win over an argument with whatever means, such as presenting fact as fiction and fiction as fact. Social scientists and its various audiences can change the mores of intellectual discussion so that we all treat our beliefs as propositions to be tested rather than catchphrases or hashtags to be defended. Our special thanks to the Department of Communication and to the experts from the fields of political communication, digital media, and journalism who are joining us today. I hope that the short time we have together will provide an excellent opportunity to learn from one another and enhance the depth and complexity of our engagement with digital media, journalism, and political communication. In other words, to respond to the call of the problem-solving mode. Have a fun and insightful time this morning. On behalf of the Aveliana family, please welcome Mr. Joey Aveliana, the son of uh, Mr. Toto Aveliana. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the Aveliana family, I am pleased to welcome you to the third Jose V. Totoy Aveliana Lecture entitled Communication, Technology, and Truth. I take this opportunity to briefly talk about my father as my way of thanking him for his lifelong legacy, which has given his family and friends the inspiration to set up the professorial chair in his name in communication arts at the Ateneo. In high school and college, Totoy wore many hats. He was a thespian, orator, editor, and head cheerleader of the Blue Babel Battalion. In his professional career, he counted among the first generation of Filipino practitioners in what was then the birth of the modern era of communications after the war in the late 50s and early 60s. It was in the communications industry where he honed his craft excelling in the fields of film production, advertising, public relations, and marketing. Totoy was a firm believer in the power of communication. He was consumed by it. He would speak eloquently about the topic. Let me recount some of those golden nuggets. Here's one. Communications is power. Through it, one has the ability to teach, to mold, to create. And another, as communicators, we have a responsibility to use communications responsibly, to build up, not to tear down, to inspire, not to put down. Today's communications has been transformed by technology that is changing at such a fast clip that we can ever catch up with. Algorithms and performance metrics 
attest to the increasing influence and impact of social media in our daily lives. Interestingly, the power of communication has taken center stage prominence, in particular as a result of the ongoing political exercise being presently undertaken. Except that, a sinister dark side of the communications process has also been unmasked. It comes by many names. Disinformation, alternative truth, fake news, mind conditioning, to name a few. To be sure, we are all actors in this daily drama as senders or receivers of these messages. Beyond these, however, as communicators ourselves, we have a responsibility to ensure the integrity of the word, whether written, spoken, acted, tweeted, or even TikToked. In a recent online study conducted by Bosses Pilipinas in late 2021, with over 20,000 Filipino youth, almost half of the respondents couldn't tell fake news from real. Permit me to quote from the observation of the Bosses Pilipinas convener, Doctora Imelda Deinla, and I quote, the Philippine youth are now immersed in a culture of fake news. If we want to create a better future for our youth, one that knows the truth, who can judge between right and wrong, who can trust institutions, then we will need a collective effort to overcome this information pandemic. So now on top of a global pandemic caused by COVID, we now have to deal with another kind of pandemic involving communications, news as we know it, but can't tell if it's fact or fiction as today's program brief suggests. At this juncture, let me thank the Department of Communications of the Ateneo for putting this most timely lecture topic together. Likewise, let me acknowledge our distinguished resource speakers and panelists to today's program. We thank them for their generosity in sharing their time and expertise and for gracing today's event. In closing, let me also acknowledge a talented communicator from the Ontiveros Avellana side of the family, our moderator for today, my cousin Pia. Maraming salamat sa inyong lahat. A pleasant good morning to all. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of Welcome to the third Jose Totoy Avellana Memorial Lecture. Honoring the legacy of Mr. Jose Avellana in communication and the arts, the annual lecture tackles contemporary issues in communication, media, and society. The department is grateful to the Avellana family for their support in this institutional endeavor. Compared to the media landscape, two decades ago, today's audiences have the capacity for media production. We have a situation in which users of media have become content creators who, alongside conventional media, participate in the flow and production of information. With less gatekeeping processes in place, information and claims, whether truthful or not, proliferate in the current media landscape. Today's lecture examines the phenomenon of disinformation. Departing from a traditional lecture mode, we adopt a conversational format. The first part is a panel discussion where experts define and analyze the phenomenon of disinformation. The second part is a conversation among scholars and journalists on how to respond to the challenges of truth-telling in a digital media landscape. To facilitate today's conversation, we are fortunate to have Ms. Pia Contiveros. 
chief correspondent of CNN Philippines and an alumna of the Department of Communication. Please feel free to share your thoughts and questions with the panel and moderator. Looking forward to your engagement and have a good day. Thank you, Dr. Lorenzana. Um, actually, IS, <laughs> but I took calm subjects. Anyway, and that was a long time ago. This year, and mainly because schools are still mostly on online teaching platforms, this lecture is being live streamed via Facebook and YouTube from the communication studio of the Ateneo de Manila. Our first discussion focuses on how the truth on key issues affecting the country can be altered mm -hmm. and even twisted to suit certain objectives, unlike traditional media sources that have ethical work practices that uh, guide its news production. This is true, you know, the, the newsrooms I have worked in and still do today, uh, we have very stringent rules the way we uh, uh, obtain information the way we write, uh, the words we choose. Uh, many content creators, uh, in contrast, have a literal free reign on how to create their uh, own versions or interpretations of events or even uh, the truth. Uh, for some strange reason, because, you know, people think that because they're entitled to their opinions, they're also entitled to their own facts. Let's watch this video. In our present-day world that looks connected, the allegedly true can be twisted to make it appear to be the truth. <laughs> Gone are the days when only conventional or traditional media, like print and broadcast, were the sources of news, information, and truth. There were built-in policies, procedures, and work processes that attempted to qualify and confirm facts, figures, and stories before they came out. Not anymore. With digital media exploding from all directions, there are more sources and opportunities to transmit unsubstantiated information for a variety of intentions and objectives. With a few clicks and images, anyone can actually create one's own version of the truth. The truth has not entirely set us free, as it has been twisted by the dubious and at times nefarious intentions of trolls and content creators. Instead of creating better understanding because of legitimate varied views, there are sadly alternative, disparaging, if not harmful perspectives that contort and distort the truth. We end up disillusioned, uninformed, and seek agreement and affirmation usually from those that share our views. Today's world of information is not necessarily the reimagined public sphere. The reliable and meaningful use of interactive communication platforms is seriously threatened by those who find the truth so easy to alter and manipulate. Our guests for our first panel today are John Neri, a longtime columnist for the Philippine Daily Inquirer and now writing for Rappler. He's also a lecturer here at the Ateneo's Department of Communication and a board member for the Asian Center for Journalism, or ACFJ. Uh, also, three batches ahead of me <laughs> here in Ateneo. Two, one. Three. <laughs> three. Okay. Hi, John. Thank you for being here. Hi. Dr. Cheryl Ruth Soriano, a professor at the Department of Communication of De La Salle University, Aside from having, having served as chair right, uh, of that department, she's also been a research fellow in Australia and China. Dr. Soriano's comprehensive research has been published in international journals and publications, and she has authored and co-authored books on digital communication issues and consumption. Hi, should I call you Dr. Cheryl? <laughs> Cheryl. Cheryl. <laughs> Thank you for being here, Cheryl. And Jose Mari Paul Lanuza, JM. Yes is an assistant professor at the University of the Philippines, Manila. He has been chair of the Department of Political Science there as well. He is a published scholar whose research interests include disinformation and influence operations, political communication, elections, campaigns, and voting. Hi, Jam. Thank you very much for being here. Okay. Um, you know, be, be, before we start, I just wanted to, you know, for the students who are listening, 
a little bit of an advice lang two things uh, just for you guys you young people no uh, first to please listen very well we have what we call uh, active listening because the usual listening we do is um, you know I'm, I'm, I'm talking for example or someone's talking and then we're already forming opinions or thoughts in our own mind uh, in, in our head no and active listening suspending your thoughts uh, your uh, opinions and bracketing them literally and then setting them aside you need that because uh, so that you can hear <laughs> and understand and comprehend what people are saying the other thing is uh, for students again to um, please take notes no um, not on your gadgets and you're probably uh, reaching for your phones or your iPads or your your fingers are you know suspended hovering <laughs> over the keyboards no but what I want to uh, encourage you today and you know in the coming years is to um, in instruments of choice nothing should be pen and paper or you know pen and notebook pen and paper write down your notes uh, bullet points by hand because if it hasn't been in the hand it hasn't it's not in the the heart or in the head so uh, active listening and please take notes a lot of them uh, the reason why we're doing this and why these are important is because this morning what you're actually attending and you're not just listening to a lecture you're attending a master class okay and this is uh, you're very fortunate to be able to do this because uh, we have before you three, and then later in the second panel, three more people, professionals, veteran, and respected journalists, and academics, and opinion leaders. So this is uh, a really great opportunity for everyone listening today. Okay, so let's begin. So our, our guests, like I was saying, and uh, introduced them earlier, John Neri, Sharon Soryan, and GM Lanusa. Um, before we go to the, um, the more difficult questions, on a scale of, uh, and I'm sure you're, you're thinking, she's going to say 1 to 10, no? <laughs> on a scale of 10 to 10, <laughs> how frustrated are you about, you know, distortions of the truth, disinformation, misinformation? Very quickly now, John. 10? <laughs> Sherry? 10? 10. 10. 10, 10, 10. So that makes it 30, okay. So how did we get to this point? And is there no return? Na ba? Ito na ba talaga? Or is it gonna get worse? You know, people say, you know, before it gets, you know, before it gets better, it gets worse. You no. Know? So how did we get to this point? And are trolls, fake news, revisionism, is this going to be a part of our lives already from now on, John? Well, there's a lot to unpack. Uh, I want to start by saying that mm -hmm. uh, it is dangerous for us to speak of this information in the passive voice. Mm -hmm. When we say facts were fabricated mm -hmm. or the truth was distorted. Sometimes we use the passive voice because we don't want to point an accusing finger mm -hmm. at individuals or institutions. But I think that uh, that's actually playing into the, to the game of disinformation agents. We should actually speak uh, of disinformation agents or disinformation campaigns or disinformation actors. Because I think the first thing to note is that disinformation is not an accident. Mm. Uh, Such a yeah, mm. nobody just happens to have spliced mm. a video, mm. you know, showing a political rival in the worst possible light, right? So I think that we, th that's something that we need to uh, actively address. There is an act of uh, uh, illegality, uh, even immora immorality, mm. involved in making uh, disinformation content. I think I, I think I want to start there. Um, yeah. <laughs> so there, there is intent, there is motive. No, yes, that's right. Like yeah. you said, hindi naman accident ito. It's not a coincidence. No? That's right. Okay. Dr. Cheryl. Cheryl. Yeah. I, I think it's important to think about uh, the, the idea that you have an, a social technical environment. You have the rise of social media. And we say that this rise of social media has facilitated a lot of opportunity for participation. And then that has led to a lot of irresponsible um, uh, uh, opportunities for content creation. But the second and more important question I think that we need to ask is, in the sense of a lot of this content having been created, what is it about this new dynamic social technical environment that's reconfiguring our notions of authority? and epistemic authority. Why is it that despite the fact that many are created, why is it that certain people tend to believe certain information out there that's not necessarily vetted? So I think it goes down to a deeper question of how is this entire environment, maybe the blending of the political and the social technical conditions, is reconfiguring our notion of trust, epistemic authority, and also, in the end, truth. Can you Define epistemic authority. Meaning? When I say epistemic authority, I'm, I'm pertaining here to the authorities that we trust to be telling us what's the truth. Mm. What's we real. used to trust or still trust? Like we trust. Is, so yeah. well, epistemic is about knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. So we have our sources of authority mm. 
when we talk about knowledge. These are people that are eligible to speak, eligible to be heard, but also we trust what they're saying yeah. to be the source of authority, to be the source yeah. of the real, uh -oh. right? What I'm saying is that uh, it's important to think about how the entire political environment, JM can talk more <laughs> about that, but the, also the socio-technical environment, how those dynamics are reconfiguring this notion of Mm -hmm. epistemic authority because okay. it's so crucial in the question about disinformation. Yeah. Epistemic authority as opposed to the influencers now. Also, yes. In a way? Yes. A way. Okay, GM. To add to Dr. Cheryl's um, insights, on the one hand, you have the platforms, from a systemic point of view, you have the platforms being more horizontal or being less regulated than other uh, platforms or other uh, media outlets. So that's one. It's, a, it's more horizontal in terms of access. Anyone who has a voice, anyone who has a gadget, and anyone who has internet connection can speak out their mind, even if it's true or not. But on the other hand, there's also the regulatory side. So if you look at the political system, or if we're zoning in on political disinformation specifically, the regulatory frameworks that we have are finding it hard to keep up, or finding it hard to uh, locate where the roots are of these uh, disinformation actors and how we can stop them if it's for political disinformation in terms of electoral campaigns our campaign finance regulations are lagging and we simply cannot keep up with the speed of the innovations that are happening especially in the philippines where it's a free for all fiesta for disinformative actors the 2016 forms are already ancient in terms of innovation <laughs> the 2019 okay. uh <laughs> innovations <laughs> were already ahead of its time and then we Vintage are now, no? Okay. And we're seeing new forms here in 2022, but the regulations are still somewhere between 2016 to 2017. Mm -hmm. So, on the one hand, you also have that. And it's really hard because all of this disinformation, um, insecurities that we have, it's been years in the making. It wasn't just overnight. Mm -hmm. And we were slow to catch up. We were slow to respond to it. We were content with heckling or insulting. Uh, disinformative actors in 2016. Mm -hmm. We were saying that at least we know the truth. They they can get fooled, but we know the truth. But the effects of all of those years are happening right now, and it's bigger than ever before. Mm -hmm. And I don't know uh, whether our regulators and whether the regular people at their homes recognize how big the problem is and how uh, ubiquitous the problem is. Yeah. This didn't, didn't happen overnight, it, it took a while, but we really didn't see this coming. I mean, w you know, the first time we all got on the internet, when we first had our first emails, um, you know, the first time we discovered www. Ganon, hindi natin uh, akalain na ganito ang mangyayari in, uh, at this point. I don't think... We didn't think it would be <laughs> this way. We thought it would be helpful. I think there's, a, meant to be a, there's an yeah. initial wave of digital optimism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, digital right? optimism. Like we, okay. we all thought, okay, so this is going to level the playing field. Everyone yeah. now has a, a chance to be heard and so mm -hmm. on and so forth. Of course, uh, uh, the research has shown that, uh, and in our own experience mm -hmm. uh, validates, that uh, a lot of the information sources that we have, let's say on the internet, actually... Uh, 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 part of you know consolidated consolidated media enterprises. So there has been a reconsolidation of mm -hmm. power, for instance. But 10, 15 years after we all thought that, mm -hmm. hey, this is you know this is the great opportunity for us. So there, there there's been a lot of promise that um, uh, was not fulfilled. Actually, it the, the opposite uh, took place. Mm -hmm. You you mentioned you talked about GM. You talked about uh, reg regulatory regulating. You, you are suggesting, although of course we will talk about this at greater length in the second panel. No? But I'm sure pahapiyaw natin mapag-usapan yun. You're suggesting regulation. There is, has that, to is that realistic? I mean, really? Regulation has to come in at some point, right? Whether it's uh, done by the state alone or by a confluence of different actors. It has to be part of the solution, but it's not the only solution because that's yeah. that's terrifying. That's a slippery slope to authoritarianism. Exactly. All right. Um, there's there's this question here uh, about, um, and this is something you're always asked about. You know, how can uh, the ordinary social media user, you know, people on the internet, mga netizens, so how can they distinguish between uh, fake news and what's true? Um, can we, you know, just go over that very quickly? Sure. I, I guess that is the one of, that's one of the biggest problems in 
John was talking about the promises of the digital, and that's of course includes expression. And then expression comes in with information. So there's a lot of people expressing themselves, express, uh, uh, their opinions, but there's also people making claims about knowledge and information. And those two blur. It's yeah. very hard to distinguish the two, but they coexist in the same environment. They flow mm -hmm. from one into the other. Yeah. That's what makes it hard to actually catch disinformation yeah. in a lot of ways. So you have had your old versions of falsehoods, your mga, ano, fabrication, changing the URL, you know, so, uh, 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 direct uh, manipulation of content. But you also have, and this is what we saw in our personal research, you also have a lot of people purporting to be sharing ideas, opinion, or I found something. But it, it's hard to distinguish this as propaganda, as a falsehood, because sometimes they might insert certain falsehoods within a 30-minute uh, mm. uh, video of opinion expression. So that's the part where it starts to become, I feel, blurry. Yeah. Are you saying that uh, people are entitled, we're all entitled to our own opinions, but we are not entitled to our facts? <laughs> yes, yeah, so, uh, I think the dangerous part is when you are insinuating that you are making claims about knowledge, about mm. information, no? versus admittedly saying that this is my opinion, this is my expression. The other difficult thing we see in the context of leading to disinformation or seeding doubt, no? a lot of gossip seeding, a lot of doubt seeding. And doubt seeding, I feel, is playing an important role. It's not blatantly uh, articulating a falsehood, but it's nudging someone to doubt. And then you have other actors that are penetrating the sphere with blatant disinformation. So it's like a, a, a one entity seeding doubt. And then when you start doubting, you have other sources that you could pull out mm -hmm. to feed that doubt. So that's what we're, we're, we're kind of seeing in our research. Mm -hmm. I think what we're seeing is that there's an evolution in the types uh, and in the forms of disinformation that we're seeing. Uh, let me take uh, maybe two steps back. Uh, I think it's important to note that disinformation has been around uh, even before uh, digital media emerged, right? I mean, lying is as old as human nature. Uh, I mean, the United States uh, uh, rationalized its uh, conquest of the Philippines as an attempt to Christianize an already Christian uh, country. I mean, uh, that was, you know, that, 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 that kind of disinformation was already... Uh, it's all in answer to your question, what can ordinary citizens do? And I think the first thing we can do is we need to understand that the problem is changing. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. J.M. said earlier, uh, maybe if, uh, at, at, you know, um, the regulatory framework is 2016 to 2017, but it's not only the regulatory framework, it's also our own ways of understanding. We're still hooked on Oh wow! So that's what Duterte did in 2016. <laughs> but it's already <laughs> six <laughs> years, so, and yeah. and it turns out that the real masters in this information mm -hmm. uh, are the Marcos channels, and they've mm -hmm. been seeding this, they've been developing, they've been evolving their disinformation over so many years. They're actually quite, they're very good. I mean, have you have you spent time on TikTok? <laughs> Now, th this, this will surprise you probably, yeah, unless you've also, also seen this, the most non-political person, uh, the non-political member of the Marcos family, Irene, is a totem, is an icon on TikTok. I mean, there are so many TikTok videos about her being a simple person, you know, a person with refined taste, you know, booting um, tao and so on. And it's like, wh what? she's presented as the face of the family. It's part of this family. attempt to humanize mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. This brutal, cruel family, yeah. uh, and when I first realized, I was like, "Wow!" Yeah. I mean, it it is in fact true. She's a nice person. She just happens yeah. to be the daughter of a dictator. Uh -oh. uh, but like uh, you said, this has been going on for a long time, long before the advent of social media. Because uh, nung pag unang balik nila, hindi ba? I mean, we could see it, right? You know, the way they were able to get back into yeah, society, di ba? Oh. For for me, uh, for me, uh, a touchstone really is 1995. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Bongbong Marcos ran for the Senate and lost. Mm -hmm. uh, he waited 15 years until 2010, and then he ran for the Senate and won comfortably. And I think it's important for us to mm -hmm. understand exactly what happened. And I think in 2009, 2008, mm -hmm. 2009, we can already see that they were uh, going into social media, especially YouTube, oh, yeah. in a big way. 2018, mm -hmm. 2019. Yeah, and then, and then after, they, they have just been... Uh, continuing uh, to, to, to add to the... So there's an entire Marcos propaganda ecosystem on YouTube. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and as Dr. Sheriff Soriano uh, was saying, uh, you see the doubt and then the answer to, you know, to resolve the doubt is actually another part of the entire ecosystem. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, okay. So this entire ecosystem, this entire, what you call the entire Marcos propaganda machine, mm-hmm. if you will, mm-hmm. um, th- that is in answer already to how large this industry is, um, you know, the, the, that next question, because it's about, you know, how large an industry are we talking about in terms of uh, fake news creators, trolls, or, you know, people who say, uh, you know, uh, a, a kernel of truth and then it's mixed with so many other things. Who wants to take that? Do you want? Okay. Um, it's in connection with the second question. Mm. If we look at the specific details of how this information is being put out right now, it's so advanced that the regular person cannot actually differentiate it between what's true and what's false if you face what do you uh, mean by regular person a normal citizen that's oh. it can be an educated citizen but if you give if you give them deep fakes or heavily edited videos of a person talking about something when that really didn't happen that's really that's really hard to uh, discern so if you have these kinds of sophisticated disinformation then it partly speaks to the the size or Uh, the magnitude of the industry that's alive right now but the thing is at least for our research particularly it's very hard to establish how big the operations are or how uh, many the operators are because they're all operating under very uh, discrete terms so it's really hard to trace the meme or the post becomes authorless so you don't know where it started you don't see how big the reach is, but it's definitely alive. You can see it growing, you can see it spreading. So maybe the authorless aspect is mm-hmm. what gives us an idea of how big this is. Mm-hmm. You cannot hide uh, that big of an operation without being too influential. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. andaling ngayon mag-share, eh, di ba? It's just a click of a button. Um, you, you don't catch something and you think, hey, this is a nice video, I'll share it na. Share ka, retweet ka, no? I think as an intentionally orchestrated network it's hard to discern because there's a lot of grayness people don't make claims that they're being paid so in in our research on youtube it's it's hard because some people are saying that i am just an ordinary person who did my own research Mm -hmm. but then um the impact is what i'm saying the impact of that entire ecosystem or network is huge they're being shared not just within a platform across the platforms they're most likely being shared outside of the uh, of, of the public spaces meaning in small groups and then probably extending also in dinner conversation so what i'm saying is that it may not be that easy to pinpoint it as a as a, a as a paid industry but the impact of the entire ecosystem on this information is huge uh, in the sense that as as a, as a narrative network they're able to compose narratives that kind of really can construct myths distort facts, realities, histories even. Mm-hmm. Um, y- you talked about paid, no? uh, whether we, we can't distinguish if they're paid or not. Uh, and this leads us to our next question. Uh, uh, because, you know, people can always say, um, I mean, those who, those, b- because we, we do know of uh, some people like that, no? they're paid to do this, mm-hmm. no? this ito trabaho nila. Mm-hmm. Then they'll say, hanap buhay ko ito. Trabaho lang ito, walang personalan. You know, if I if I don't do this, then I can't feed my family. I can't provide for them. So, how do you respond to, to something like that? I, I I guess on top of my head is it that's where it's hard to put the blame on mm. the lower level people involved in digital labor, because even them, we, we need to situate this within yeah. an entire condition of precarity, economic precarity. Because I guess these people will not want to be involved in that. If, if they are voting for or supporting that candidate, then well and good. But if not, they're just forced to be doing this dirty work, troll work for money. I don't think they would want to do that. So I guess the blame is hard to put on them. But then, uh, uh, as, as other scholars have pointed out, it's important to point out the real operators of this information. Mm-hmm. And I guess since 2016 that this has been pointed out until now. There has been Senate hearings even on this. (laughs) I don't think any major political operator has been pinned down. Parang parang sa drug war lang eh. (laughs) Ang ang nahuhuli yung yung small time. Uh, Yung uh, yung drug pusher on the street. Pero hindi yung yung big time. The the only big one actually that was named 
uh, was named by a private sector organization, Facebook, Facebook. which is now Meta, uh -huh. uh, when it identified Nick uh, Gabonada. Twinmark. Yeah, also the, uh, the, the company Twinmark. Uh, of course, Nick Gabonada says you know he, he didn't get the chance to defend himself and so on. But uh, it's very interesting that uh, in that uh, last purge uh, of uh, Facebook, uh, he was identified as uh, connected to this hub of uh, uh, sites that engage in what it uh, what, what Facebook calls coordinated inauthentic behavior. So it it wasn't actually a uh, a judgment on the content. Uh, it was in the action. So th that's how a, a, a company like Facebook would know if you are uh, uh, an, a disinformation agent. Mm. Innocent, uh, meaning hindi, parabang hindi ordinary netizen. Uh, yeah, like it's, it's, it's share. That's right. It, it is it's, 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 it, coordinated it, attack. Mm. So, or, or, or like they were all created, mm. all, all the accounts are created mm. uh, mm. at the same time, or all of a sudden there, you, you bought new accounts and so yeah. on. Mm. And then you all updated the same content yeah. uh, across the board at 2:42 a.m. Mm. It's like who is awake at that? You know that, that sort of thing. So uh, <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I, I, yeah I, I think that's yeah. one. Uh, 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 Lorraine Badoy Partosa said she couldn't understand. I mean, how can you uh, cut down on these uh, uh, accounts uh, when you didn't even pass judgment on the content? And I think she missed the point entirely. It wasn't the content; it was the behavior. These are people who. Uh, well, th these are superhuman people. I mean, if they do all of these uh, yeah. at, at the same time, act the same way. Yeah. Well, if there was Nick, Nick Gabunada before, mm -hmm. then th that must be just the tip of the iceberg. Then mm -hmm. there must be so many more because 2016, you know, 2022 na ngayon. And li like you were saying, no, th there's like a, a systematic, there's machinery. Uh, we, we can all see it, but parang we, we can't really, like, you know, touch it. We can't, no, JM? Is yeah. That so, and, and you know there are so many so many channels now. There's there's I mean apart from YouTube, there's TikTok, WeChat, etc. No, and then of course all those vibrant groups. So outside of Nick Abunada and Twinmark, the other big name that has been put out there is Cambridge Analytica and the Duterte's campaign in 2016. Mm -hmm. But outside of those two, mm -hmm. we don't have any knowledge on who were running these operations. But they're definitely there. So we have scholarship, we have literature on it, uh, but. It's anonymous. So this is what we need to, to understand. The mainstream sentiment is people are punching down on citizens that are sharing this information or that are believing in this information. But the thing is, you need to punch up. Mm -hmm. I want to echo Dr. Cheryl's mm -hmm. sentiment. You need to punch up because what you need to ask is, why is there a demand for these types of precarious labor and this informative labor? So who are employing them? Who are employing them, yeah. Which industries are hiring? Which companies are hiring? Which politicians are hiring? Those mm. are what we need to look at. And how we can do that is, one, by establishing maybe interagency councils between mm. civil society organizations, mm. the academe, uh, these platforms, and the government. But that will include regulation. But the regulation cannot mm. be monolithic or cannot be on the, on the state alone. Because mm -hmm. that can be a one way ticket to propaganda, to state propaganda, and that's more difficult. So, again, parang kung drug war pag usapan, parang mm -hmm. hanapin natin yung big time drug lord. Mm -hmm. Di ba? Mm -hmm. Okay. But, you know, I was thinking, di ba? Okay, so you said, ni Kabunado to Mark Cambridge Analytica. But then, kasi wala naman talagang, meron bang kumpanya na, ano mo, may headquarters, tas may, may pangarin silang ganun. Do people actually hand. People don't hand out business cards. Hey, you know, I can do. I have a troll <coughs> farm, you wanna hire me? Parang ganun. Walang ganun, di ba? Right? So, Baka meron. You have this meron, diba? You have this meron. information architects for from, all campaigns, by the way, right? Yes. For all campaigns kaya? Yes. Mm, hindi lang yan one party or one mm. group. So you have this information mm. architects from advertising and PR firms. Mm. They're the ones who are running the consultancy business with the politician and then they're the ones who are serving as a middleman for uh mm community mm. level fake account operators or in some cases it's the in-house staff mm -hmm. of the politicians so you have interns you have the employees the actual chief of staff running the, op the operations running 10 to 12 fake accounts at a time per person 10 to 12 mm. lit naman nun yeah. pero yun po yung <laughs> challenge farm yan. pero yun po yung challenge <laughs> for, for <laughs> establishing the size because you have one person running how many accounts 10, 50 so yeah. you don't know how many are actually involved or 1,000 or 1,000 teka muna sabi mo ah advertising and PR firms like <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. It's, 
it's part of our uh, research in 2019. Yeah. It was a follow-up to the 2018 uh, study on the 2016 elections, but we yeah. really yeah. can't mm -hmm. uh, name but, these yeah. firms. But we are aware of all these ad advertising and PR firms that did work for all candidates, diba? I'm not sure about a lot of them. I'm not. I don't have data on a lot of them personally, yeah. but I know of some. Oh, but, but you know, like for example, we talked to some of them, and some of them would say that they would yeah, they refuse um, to work with certain candidates, mm -hmm. or meron talagang would work with them, hindi ba? Mm -hmm. Is that that's part of the network, ba? I mean. Mm -hmm. So what yeah. Saying? Well, no I, no. I was going to say that yeah. uh, sooner or later, the advertising and PR industries uh, have to have a, a moment of reckoning. Mm. Uh, we know that this is happening. Uh, some of them have been uh, courageous enough to share their work, uh, although on conditions of uh, anonymity and so on, with researchers. But uh, mm. there has to come a time when they they, they need to. Uh, uh, crack down on essentially unethical behavior. Mm. Um, th these are, you know, uh, disinformation architects using principles, techniques of advertising and uh, and PR uh, in order to create disinformation campaigns. And I think that well, they'll have to have a moment of reckoning. Mm, yeah. <laughs> but they, yeah, but they do have their own rules. I mean, like Kenya journalists, we have. We have guidelines, yes. mm -hmm. eh, but they do, right? I mean, there's like truth in advertising, etc. Mm -hmm. mm, kind of protocol, yeah, uh -huh. uh, or or even perhaps the the hashtag of the day, etc. Mm -hmm. I, I I guess, Pia, what I also wanted to raise is that it, it's important to look at the chief architects, but yeah. the blurry part mm -hmm. here are the people with faces. We can see them online on YouTube. Uh, our, mm -hmm. our research on YouTube, you have people that amass over 500,000 subscribers. That mm -hmm. means that they're also sufficiently earning as individuals. Mm -hmm. They might not be your chief architects. As I mentioned, it's very hard to know whether they're, they're operating under the umbrella of a larger disinformation infrastructure, but they have faces, they insert falsehoods within opinion articulations, and then they're able to monetize this. Who's making them accountable? So just last night, I checked one of those uh, influencers that we have included in our study, that influencer from 400,000 has boomed into 800 over 1,000 subscribers. That all, and, and then that particular video, period? I guess within a year mm -hmm. of our research. And then mm -hmm. that video of that influencer saying, asking the question, may na abuso ba talaga no martial law? Mm -hmm. And then within the video of about seven minutes, making articulations that wala naman talaga na abuso, kalokohan yan, ang na abuso lang ay ang mga tao na Gustong ibagsak ang napakagandang gobyerno. So that blatant denial of torture is included in that video, and that video exists. Mm -hmm. it, it, yeah. And then you have that person with a face. I guess my question here is that Who do we need to make mm -hmm. this person accountable yeah. for making claims when it can also double as it's my opinion? Yeah. Or I was asking a question. I was asking planting, the question. But the, the, the result is planting a seed of doubt. Precisely. But if you know, kunyare, you watch it, you know, abuse na nga ba no martial law? And then, a netizen, anybody, educated or not, smart or not, mm -hmm. oh nga pala, no? Mm -mm. Ganon. Tapos nag-interview siya ng matanda nag sa backyard oh. niya. Sabi <laughs> ng matanda, niya, ano, uh, 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 some, some elderly person, okay. Ano po ba talagang pa, pa, uh, uh, experience yun ng martial law? Napakaganda ng martial law. Walang na-torture noon. Ang mga lumalaban lang yung NPA. And then, there was even an articulation within that video clip where a particular person was interviewed that was casting doubts on the, the specificities, uh, specificities of the torture that were experienced by the survivors that have shared them. So, is it really true that you were electrocuted? Mm. Which hospital were you sent to? Oh, you don't have proof of that. It must be false. Mm. So, it's, it's something yeah. like that. Oh. that. That's what I'm talking about. Who's going to make these people yeah. accountable? But, but these questions, in a way, sound legit, diba? Because, you know, in, in our world today, it's like you make a claim, can you prove it? The problem is, how can you prove that you were tortured? I mean, it's not like somebody gave you a medical certificate that you were tortured, right? Diba? Exactly. Of course, there's proof. Um, you have the. Well, you can't, you well, have a PD. So your torturer cannot be your witness. Okay. Well, well, that's true. But again, mm -hmm. uh, in in true, uh, what kind of knowledge do you trust? Mm -hmm. This person has evidence. I interviewed an elderly person having experienced this and having talked to another person claiming. 
to have been tortured but could not produce evidence. So for, for this circle of people, this is sufficient evidence to, fal to falsify that belief that there's been torture. But then you have another slew of evidence, very important. You have a PD, no? uh, uh, providing funding for the victims of martial law. You have that, you have that uh, uh, entire evidence of people who have been tortured and victimized and the state providing for funding to be able to support them. So uh, uh, what I'm saying is that it, yeah. it's, it's hammering on one particular evidence, but quote unquote evidence yeah. versus. Yeah, you have the, the government, in this case, the Duterte administration, handing out uh, reparations or yeah, financial support for these martial law victims. Yeah, John. Um, uh, yeah, so I, I guess uh, I, it's important for us to realize that uh, there are different forms of intervention uh, that are called for. Uh, when it comes to advertising and PR agencies, for instance, we can hold them to uh, their own conduct uh, according to their own uh, codes of ethics, for instance. Uh, Dr. Serrano's question about what you do with these influencers who you know, engage in public discourse but uh, deny the facts of history, I think that another form of intervention will be called for. I, I'm, I'm not suggesting that we should cut down, uh, you know, uh, at, uh, ask them to, uh, to stop. I mean, they're well within their rights uh, to do that. Um, so maybe the intervention there would be like a counter uh, narrative, uh, right? Uh, it's pre precisely pointing to uh, the Human Rights uh, Reparation, Human Rights Victims Reparations Act, uh, for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, so there will be many, many uh, uh, ways of intervening. Uh, it's not just uh, the advertising and peer agencies that need a moment of reckoning. Mm -hmm. I think it's the Philippine uh, society as a whole, the uh, <laughs> down the road, I think we need to we need to come to terms. Uh, what what you know what what really strikes strikes me is that uh, in 2015 we started the year in a very different uh, way and then we ended it in a completely different way. In January 2015, we had the largest uh, audience assembled ever for a Pope papal Francis. visit, yeah. right? And everyone he was the most popular uh, person ever polled in the Philippines. Uh, that was in January 2015. And in November 2015, you had uh, a popular candidate for president uh, curse that same pope. Mm. Uh, there was an immediate backlash against him, but it was uh, also temporary. And then by, this, by January, his, his ratings were again on the ascendant. And I, I, I look at that year, 2015, and I, and I wonder what happened in that year. Plot twist. <laughs> Plot twist, <laughs> yes. I mean, it's just... Uh, it's just uh, yeah. Amazing. Okay, we have like about five minutes to go, but I wanted to just ask, you know, you talk about intervention, counter-narrative, but do you feel like, <sighs> uh, how, how do you describe It's like you're drowning in all these, and dami eh, di ba? It can get very overwhelming. Uh, you know, who's going to like, what, we're going to monitor everybody, and then, you know, how are you going to monitor reaction, those shares, those retweets, those, you know. <sighs> Uh, I'll, I'll start yeah, so that uh, the academics uh, <laughs> can have the last word. Yeah. Um, I see what you mean, and mm -hmm. I think we need to push back against that. Uh, of course, it is overwhelming. Uh, there's a term for this, that the fire hose of falsehood, right? So we're mm -hmm. you know drowning under that. Uh, so what, what can we do? I mean, we can't all reach for the switch and turn off the fire hose. Um, we can do little things. I just want to focus on one thing. Um, I'm really struck by the research conducted by Dr. Soriano on YouTube, for instance, where she talks, where she discovers, for instance, what she calls aspirational tropes uh, of the uh, aspirational tropes. tropes yeah, T R O P E S. Uh, yeah. Okay. So th uh, th these are the um, uh, narratives uh, that are being circulated in the pro Marcos uh, uh, ecosystem. Uh, why is that imp important? Because while it's important uh, to fact check, I think it's important to Let's, uh, let's say message check. Uh, what I mean to say is that, in fact, disinformation campaigns, I, I think, boil down to uh, just a handful of main messages. Uh, mm -hmm. In the case of Duterte, one of the main messages was uh, the media is biased. Another mm -hmm. of the main messages uh, in Duterte's campaign was that uh, you know, it's time for, our, uh, you know, um, uh, it's our turn now, no? Uh, not not Imperial Manila's. Uh, it, you know, Imperial Manila has been there for for such a long time. Uh, for the Marcos uh, tropes, the um, my understanding of of her research, uh, 
uh, tells us that people uh, look at uh, the Marcus years as um, uh, as, a, as, a, as a golden age. Uh, we were at, they actually believe that we were an economic superpower that our <laughs> democracy that our uh, political system then was a genuine democracy and and, and so on and so forth so uh, when you come across my, my point is that when we come across this information i think we can message check it and 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 compare it to the aspirational tropes uh, that dr soriano has uh, discovered for instance and say ah okay this, so this is about that um, and if we do that, I think we have a better way of understanding. Uh, we, we don't sort of uh, drown under so much uh, disinformation. Uh, let me just end by saying there was an attempt to change the name of the airport uh, mm. back from Nino Aquino International Airport to uh, Manila International Airport. Uh, and I think we, we need to understand that uh, attempt was because of that narrative that, the EDSA, that EDSA was a failure. So that's one of the main messages mm -hmm. of that uh, particular yeah. Duterte ecosystem. There was pushback. That, huh? there, was, there, was pushback. Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. there, there was pushback. There was pushback to that, and I think that's 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 how uh, pushback, in fact, can be generated mm -hmm. when we understand uh, these discrete uh, bits of disinformation content as really part of bigger narratives, deeper stories, mm -hmm. or overarching themes that uh, we can use to understand. Dr. Cheryl. Uh, well, John has summarized it so much better <laughs> than I could do it. I, I guess just two points for me. Uh, I feel like these information networks work by building two things. Um, latching on aspiration, as, as mm -hmm. mentioned, because again, I go back to my fir the first question that I posed in the beginning. There's so much information out there, some blatant falsehoods, but why do people believe in them? Right? And I think people believe in them primarily because of two things. Number one is that they're able to latch onto deeper Filipino aspirations. Aspirations that, oh, in the past it has been beautiful. Oh, this leader is good. So there's a lot of that packaging or re reconfiguration of that image that the Marcos image is a good image, for example. So any leader needs to be able to create or uh, um, Make their, make their campaign, make their messaging palatable and reach deep make Filipino aspirations. Or ch make a narrative or change the narrative. Or right? change yeah. the narrative okay. that connects to deep Filipino aspirations. And I guess the second part here is the question of authority. And, and I ask the question, why were these influencers, <laughs> doubt seeders, believable? Why do people believe them? Because they have managed to ground authority over the years, as JM and John have been saying. They have been doing it, creating an ecosystem that that corroborates and legitimizes what they're saying and therefore they have started to continue the engagement and create a sense of authority around them. Those two things, building an authority mm -hmm. and then being able to latch onto important narr uh, aspirational narratives have worked for them to see this information. So therefore, the applying <laughs> the same logics. How do you rebuild authority? The media is very much attacked. Academics are also attacked, uh, 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 which were your traditional sources of epistemic authority. How do we rebuild that authority? How does any campaign, other campaign, rebuild the authority to be believed by people na, oh, nga, totoo yung sinasabi niya. Naniniwala ako dito. And I have emotional and also cognitive resonance over what is being said here. Paano mo gagawin yan? I think it's so crucial in the battle for this information. JM. And then after JM, I think we're going to take uh, questions no, from the audience. JM, go ahead. It's very frustrating to realize that this overwhelming problem of disinformation can actually be uh, prevented or can be taken down a notch. For example, uh, from Cheryl's videos on YouTube. We know that YouTube can take down videos whenever they want to. We saw it when they took down Russian propaganda videos when they attacked Ukraine. Mm -hmm. So why are these videos being uh, maintained online? So knowing that is very frustrating, but at the same time, we cannot rely or cannot wait on these saviors to take down all the disinformative posts because it can just sprout up back again. So. What we need to realize is that aside from looking at it from a systems perspective, we need to understand what drives people to crave or to uh, demand disinformative content. And for me, I think it's a lot of it is democratic deficits. The lost promises of our democratic regimes, the instabilities that our people face, uh, these are at the core of why they believe democracy, uh, disinformative content. Why do they trust uh, anti-vaxxers, for example? It's because for the longest mm -hmm. time they have been divorced from campaign, scientific campaigns of the Department of Health. It's alien to them. This 
state, this government agency is so detached from their realities that it's easier to trust people they see on a daily basis or people they see online on a daily basis. So if, if it's democratic deficits or if it's insecurities or anxieties that drive disinformative demand or drive people to believe in democracies, then we should also look at resolving these democratic deficits mm -hmm. because now it becomes a societal level of a problem and a societal level of a, so level of a solution. You don't uh, confine yourself anymore to an individualist understanding of this information where it's just a question of media literacy. It's just a question of echo chambers or it's just a question of having your own small group penetrated by a bad actor. Mm -hmm. It's a, a huge problem and it's there's no one sectoral answer for it but you need to understand that it's democratic deficits as a whole yeah, when you jam explain further in democratic deficits now for example a lot of people say the reason why naglalatch on sila dun sa marcos the new marcos narrative no is because there's a lot of uh, uh disappointment uh because of after edsa and and very soon after edsa we, we saw that diba? So, and daming nag question on na that should have been the country's turning point, and yet where are we today? Parang ganon. Is that what you mean? Correct me if I'm wrong. Ah, I'm apart from the the anti-vaxxers versus the DOH. Sige. Partly it's that, but it's also mm. on a broader level the question of what our democracy has promised versus what it has delivered. You're mm. saying that democracy will give us development, and you're giving GDP rates as an evidence, but at the end of the day, development for whom? the people at the bottom are still there and mm. they're not seeing any hopes for social upward social mobility prices are still going up so yeah. all politics is local this disinformative the disformative disinformative mm. aspect of politics is still local so you won't have people having aspirational tropes for the glorious past if they're having a sufficient <laughs> present mm. if they're having good a good life now yeah well because the the, the faces the names didn't really change hindi ba? before mm -hmm. during after edsa we have the same political families right okay uh, questions uh yeah we're going to show the qu okay yeah questions uh first because of the widespread disinformation and its detrimental effects on society is it due time for the government to pass into law the anti-fake news bill it's going to take that Hmm. Anti-fake news bill. Uh, I, I guess <laughs> the first question is which bill? Uh, oh, yeah, there have yeah, been several bill. measures. Uh, the very first uh, was a noble attempt, but uh, it was also uh, it, it fell short. Uh, it did not even define fake news, so uh, it, it's very difficult. Uh, mm. We want the government involved, but at the same time, we, we don't want to put more weapons yeah, exactly. in the hands of the exactly, government. Exactly. So oh. it's, a, it's, a, it's a tricky thing. I think it's, it, uh, maybe right mm. now, I think we need to focus on working with the platforms, with mm. YouTube, with Facebook, with TikTok, and so on. Yeah. Uh, really hold them to, to account. I think that would be uh, much more effective. Citizen action instead of government regulation. In a way. Uh, Y yes, in, in a way, but more institutional. I mean, it's yeah. not just... Uh, okay. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah uh, I agree with John because a, a, lo a lot of the things that we're, are, are, we're seeing is also a result of expression, ba? Mm -hmm. Only abused expression. Mm -hmm. Pero it's still expression. And so when you have government regulation coming in and, and a bill or a law such as that, it could give your government unbridled power to curb expression mm -hmm. so uh, it, it it better be very clear no that, that it, it is it, it is not you're not giving government unbridled power to use the law to be able to stifle dissent or criticism against itself too mm -hmm. message check not just fact check not mm -hmm. institutional jam yeah if you have a look at the countries that have this kind of law you see their uh, experiences. It's a mixed bag, but it's leaning towards mostly anti-democratic uses mm -hmm. of this mm -hmm. law. So I would really caution against uh, having these proposals or having just one entity monitor all of these activities because, again, it's so easy to weaponize. You don't want this to provide a chilling effect, and particularly for the Philippines where uh, we have, relative to the region, we have a high level of media freedom, but we're also one of the most attacked in mm -hmm. terms of uh, media engagements, you have networks being shut down. You don't want to give the government more weapons, as Sir John said. Mm -hmm. And besides, things are evolving so fast, no? Uh, ang ang mm -hmm. bilis magbago mm -hmm. na. By the time uh, this law <laughs> comes into being, wala na outdated na siya. Any other questions? Things. No more na, no? Uh, okay, here, one more. 
How can web-based companies and social media encourage facts-based discussions and prevent the spread of fake news, cyberbullying, discrimination, anti-intellectualism, scams, and other cybercrimes on their platforms? Who wants to take this? John. <laughs> uh, it's, it's very difficult uh, when you realize that many of these social media platforms um, follow a business model uh, that puts a premium on uh, sensationalism. You know, uh, people click on, that's why it's called clickbait. Uh, people uh, click on these things and then they engage uh, and it doesn't really matter to the social media platforms, uh, to most of them anyway, uh, exactly what kind of content is shared uh, as long as people are sharing. Um, so I think that the, it might be difficult, it might be like a moonshot thing, no? like an Apollo thing, but I, maybe what uh, civil society needs to do, not just in the Philippines, but around the world is uh, help social media platforms re-envision themselves as businesses. Uh, in other words, is there a different kind of business model that might make sense to them? I, I, like I said, it's a... It's a, it's a moonshot. I mean, it's, a, it's like, a, wow, um, is it even possible to do that? But I think we need to ask uh, those things. I mean, um, it's not just social media platforms. It's almost any digital media uh, platform. So, for instance, Amazon.com. Uh, uh, one of its many controversies include uh, this particular chemical that's being sold, you know, for something else. But uh, teenagers in the U.S. were buying it in order to use it to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. Right, so okay. Amazon was uh, advising people, you know, wrote letters to them and so on. What happened instead was that the Amazon algorithm, when you search for that chemical, suggests other similar chemicals. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's like it does Je Jeff Bezos really care about the, you know uh, quality of life and so on and so forth. I mean, it's it, it's it's one of those things. So uh, it's very difficult uh, to uh, talk about. Uh, can we talk about you know the the, the things that were mentioned uh, without dealing with the question of the business model? Sure, no, I I totally agree. Mm -hmm. Social media platforms we see them as technology like tools mm -hmm. where we put content, but that's not really the case. The platform itself reconfigures what we see, what we don't see. It organizes for us a slew of videos or a slew of content that we will interact with and can hide, that can have the capacity of hiding content that we will not be able to see. So it has a certain kind of power over organizing or curating information for us. And in that sense, I think platforms should really be more cognizant about their role in this information and facil facilitating this information networks and narratives. So what some platforms do is try to put up content so in relation to education or in relation to COVID-19 no? it tries to elevate to visibility certain content that are vetted by your traditional gatekeepers doctors world health organization and in the context of martial law it's tried to label those content that is from the from the Britannica or from from, from legitimate uh, sources but it doesn't stop those content that are about doubt seeding to continually exist on the platform and it's hard to give the platforms further power to take down content. Because if we start giving them that power as a global platform, it's going to be very hard for them to actually discern later on which I will take down and which I will not take down. It will open to giving them unbridled power like the government. So I think it's fine at this point. What we need to do is to be able to have platforms continually think as also the disinformation operations become more complex and dynamic. Kailangan conscious sila na wala platform lang kami. We're not responsible about that content. Well, you are responsible because you're curating the content for people. What's your role in, in, in organizing this content for everyone and reconfiguring people's notion of trust? The dominant thinking right now is uh, we want platforms to regulate communication by mm -hmm regulating the algorithms and the content. So if a flag yung ganitong term, ganitong hashtag, then automatic takedown. But that's not really a good thing because it's not transparent. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's giving unlimited power to uh, private companies, to these firms. But we don't want that because it can simply be used as a tool against us again. So we want to uh, enhance transparency and accountability from these platforms. We want to demand that either from the civil society perspective or from the government perspective, we want them to be more cooperative in creating a more public interest internet. And mm -hmm. we want to allow them or to urge them to have the space for more counter speech. 
So for example, TikTok, for all of the flack it's getting as a disinformation hub, mm -hmm. has its uh, own attempts at creating more valid information by partnering with the Philippine government, by DO with DOH, with DOST, to promote actual content made by actual scientists, made by actual experts, and making it more popular and boosting it in everyone's feeds so that it becomes uh, more... Uh, seen or more visible even if you don't subscribe to these accounts so having those measures will actually help because it's um it's injecting a good amount of good quality information in that muddled public sphere all right i think we've gotten to the point what one more question there's one more question at all. should the government and its relevant agencies uh, dict nhcp dep ed chr uh, sucs lgus local governments at all actively fact check internet content and coordinate with media organizations to promote safe cyberspace experiences. Well, you'd have to hire so many people. <laughs> <laughs> well, those are actually two things, yeah. right? And I think we should uh, say <laughs> no to the first one. Uh, we don't want them to fact check the internet content. Uh, the government does not have uh, the, the, the kind the of resources yeah, or the expertise. Uh, but uh, as for the second question, uh, yes, I think that certainly mm -hmm. uh, it is part of their responsibility to help create a safe experience. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think they should uh, uh, continue to engage with the social media platforms. Uh, um, and I think the government has been doing that. Uh, but, it, but it's not just our government. I think in other countries also. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's really important. It's, it's like... I don't know, Facebook and other social media platforms, they're like the, what are they, the fifth branch of government. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, we need to, we need to... Same so fourth, yeah. I mean fourth, media. The, the, the fourth estate. <laughs> media pa rin, ha? Kaya ako na-dislodge na eh, okay. <laughs> Cheryl? Well, I'm, I'm gonna shift to the question. I think, realistically speaking, it's gonna be very hard for your government agencies to be fact-checking to be fact the, mm -hmm. the information in this sphere. What I think is important, uh, even for the, for DepEd, for 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 our for our uh, concerned departments, is to really think about how that aspect of asking questions and asking S students, people, what should be the basis for you to be able to believe something to be true. It it it, it is a. It is something that we're taught in college, mm. <laughs> in research. Um, pero at, at the, I, I feel like this is something that needs to be ingrained at the very core or basic education. When you are told something, why do you believe that? Under mm. what basis do you believe that? So this kind of a practice is, is going to be crucial so that we will build an epistemic culture that is resilient to this information. Because I feel at this point, no amount of fact-checking all this content can really be done by government. But if you have, if you build strong epistemic cultures that are that are able to make discernments, no, be, between uh, many different knowledge claims, so baka bas, baka mas equipped yung, yung, yung population to handle its complexities. And GM. In addition to those points, uh, more practical solutions that are short term. Uh, we need to make uh, clear that it's short term. Other scholars are saying that middleware initiatives should be entertained, like uh, platforms or governments hiring third-party library information scientists to help them regulate content. Library because, information scientists. Yeah, to help nice. them regulate content or, or to help them um, decide what content gets to be uh, kept, what content can be thrown out. But that's really short-term. That's really not the final answer in the long run. In the long run, I still think that... Uh, it needs to go down to the people. What do we need to say for them to believe or for them to make their own decisions and not just rely on uh, anonymous accounts online? What do we need to impart them with? What knowledge, what tools, what set of skills can we give them? Or what can we give them that they can be more enabled to not rely on alternative sources of information. All right, we need to wrap things up, so let's do final words. And we'll start with the academics Muna, so we can end with you, John, not this time around. So, JM, you come Muna, final words. Yeah, uh, I understand if people get tired or get hope. Journalists going to a particular area and, and being warmly greeted and so on and so forth. Or journalists being asked, I is this true? Uh, and so on. My, my point is that uh, media has not exactly been... Uh, Dislodged. Uh, no, I mean, it's <laughs> not, not ex ex exactly re responded yeah. in the in, in the best possible way to the disinformation uh -huh. phenomenon. Uh, it, mm. It's 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 uh, it's it's 
uh, it's taken its time but I think that um, media needs to realize that it needs to work on, on that uh, precisely because uh, its own reputation is at stake uh, and whether we, whether we realize it or not uh, it remains a benchmark for how do we know things to be true mm. uh, if there's a storm coming I don't think you're gonna look up an influencer right you're gonna look up CNN Philippines or ABS or GMA and say oh, where, where is that storm and so on so when our own lives are at stake I think uh, at that level I think we, we realize that uh, we want to go to uh, to the media I, I, so I, I wanted to end on that point okay well you know at, the, at this point um, what I need to do now is do a little wrap you know, a re, uh, what we call a recap whenever we have uh, for example breaking news coverage or live coverage and I'm going to attempt to do this after this very long and very, very interesting, very insightful discussion uh, with John, Cheryl, and uh, GM. And I'm going to do it by um, just, you know, uh, reading out bullet points that I, you know, I was, I, I was doing a lot of note taking, which I always do anyway as a journalist. So I'll start with uh, bullet points that uh, John, Cheryl, and GM shared with us. So first, number one, John is saying, don't speak in the passive voice. Cheryl is talking about epistemic authority, building and rebuilding that authority. Um, John talking about digital optimism, JM saying don't punch down, punch up, uh, and John talking about uh, this institutional effort to not just fact check but message check, um, JM saying let's resolve democratic deficits, uh, John talking about how civil society can help social media uh, and digital media platforms uh, re-envision themselves. JM, I like what you said a while ago. This is man-made, so there is hope we can do something about it. And Cheryl, that question, we should ask ourselves, why do we choose to believe certain kinds of information? I hope we get that answer very soon. Uh, and John uh, talking about there is usefulness of the term fake news. This is a backhanded compliment to the media. And yes, uh, definitely uh, media needs and does a lot uh, behind the scenes to try and really step up to the plate. So I'm going to say thank you now to our guests in this first panel, uh, John Neri, uh, Dr. Cheryl Soriano, and J.M. Lanuza. Maraming maraming salamat sa inyo. We really appreciate your time and effort. Uh, we hope you stay, even for the lunch, if <laughs> you like. <laughs> salamat. Thank you very much. We're going to take a very, um, hindi pala quick break, 10-minute break, no? A uh, 10 minute break. So, um, to the students watching, go and uh, have a little snack uh, and come back. Uh, come back to class. We'll see you at 10:40 uh, for the second panel.
And we're back. Uh, you're watching the third Jose Totoy Aveliana Memorial Lecture Series on Communication, Technology, and Truth. We are broadcasting live from the Communication Department of the Ateneo de Manila University. This, uh, we live in a time where information is readily available on traditional and more so on digital platforms. But with the abundance of media comes varied interpretations of what is believed to be true. There are legitimate sources of news, some aligned with traditional media and others, subscribing to accepted norms of ethical practice. But just as productive are content creators who have alternative intentions like revising carefully researched and documented facts or else outright distorting them in devising an alternative version to suit some defined agenda. Here's a primer. So trolls, fake news, fly-by-night creators, and other unsubstantiated stories are part of our present media landscape. These alleged creators will never admit it, but they are very much around, posting their own versions of the truth and needling those who attempt to spur clearer understanding of important issues. Are we just going to accept them as a natural outcome of digital media? Are we just going to accept that it is difficult to oversee, control, or govern? Do we simply come to terms that these exist side by side with the honest and noble attempts to use social media to encourage genuine discourse, debate, and discussion? What can be done aside from ignoring allegedly fake posts or dubious reactions to legitimate attempts at public discussion? Is it enough to starve the trolls and other truth distorters? How can we save the truth? That's right. How can we uh, save the truth from people who think that because they are entitled to their own opinions, they are also entitled to their own facts to help us understand and perhaps find ways to properly deal with unsubstantiated accounts and false claims. We have uh, here in the studio with us our second panel, Attorney Antonio Lavinia, or Dean Tony, currently teaching in a number of law schools while writing for such publications as the Manila Standard and Minda News. He has worked in government as an undersecretary in the Department of Environment and Natural Resources from 1996 to 1998 and was Dean of the Ateneo School of Government, Ateneo de Manila University for 10 years. And that's why I still call him Dean Tony. Everybody does. Hi, Dean Tony. Hello. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Yvonne Chua is Associate Professor of Journalism at the University of the Philippines, an awarded and longtime journalist. She has been associated with four fact-checking initiatives, Verifiles, Check.ph, Fact Rakers, ganda ng pa pangalan, Fact Rakers, and um, the Philippine Fact Checker Incubator Project. Uh, in the world of journalists, uh, dapat ang tawag ko kay Yvonne Idol. Hi, <laughs> hi, hi, hi Yvonne. Thank you for being here. Hi, good morning, Tia. Good to be here. And Bernice Soriano is a program and project manager and is currently project coordinator for the Foundation for Media Alternatives. She has been a consultant for the World Bank in the Philippines. Her expertise is content creation and training teams in information and digital 
communication. Hi, Bernice. Thank you very much for Hello. being with us this thank morning. Okay, this is our second panel. We had a really interesting uh, first panel discussion, and I'm sure this one will be even more ano, uh, ano, interesting. And that's an understatement. So um, let's begin with this. No? Uh, and, and this is something we asked them earlier. No? Are, are trolls here to stay? Is this a, a fact of life? No? Is this part of our natin? Are we going to have to live with them in peaceful or not peaceful coexistence? Dean Tony. Not peaceful coexistence mm. because we do have uh, tools to use uh, to fight mm. them, uh, to change behavior, uh, especially of the enablers. I mean, I'm, I'm uh, the trolls themselves, you know, that it's difficult, it's, it's human nature. Some people are evil, some people lie, uh, some people do these things for money or for their own interest. <coughs> That's that's a given. I'm a philosophy teacher as well, so that I can I have to live with. We have mm -hmm. to live with. But with what we don't have to live with is the way the trolls have been so become so powerful because best basically they have been enabled uh, particularly by social media platforms. So so if you find a strategy around dealing with enablers. Uh, who uh, will not necessarily share the the, the, the malice part of what the trolls uh, do, um, then we might be able to influence that behavior. Uh, to some extent, you already see that the trolls now are more sophisticated, much more sophisticated than, let's say, in 2016 or mm -hmm. the first three years of the Duterte uh, government. I think that's true, I think, here and, and, and abroad. But that means, actually, they're, they're smarter. Uh, and we have to also be smarter in, in fighting them. Yeah, so having on the first panel, things have evolved so quickly. No? Um, mm -hmm. You 2016, and dami nang ever since then, six years down the road. Bernice? Yes. <clears throat> um, well, trolling kasi as a behavior, talagang, mm -hmm. I think, nandiyan na yan. It's not something that will go away. It's an, and it has been there even before naman social media platforms, eh, through other online engagement, through other ways and means than before. Um, and you know, coming from yung sa sinabi din ni Dean Tony regarding dun sa ano, sa, for example, kung kaano ka sophisticated or how mm. it has been evolving. Ayun. And same as with the tech. Tech naman kasi din, ang bilis eh, ng pace ng innovation, ang bilis din ng everything. So parang, even when you look at that and how people are also adapting to the tech and how to use it for their own means, so we, we shouldn't forget the human agency behind it. Eh. So tech will evolve, but how do we use it as humans? And there will be the trolls who will use it for this way. There will also be other people who will use it in another way. So, yun, so that's how I kind of see it. Yvonne? <clears throat> well, matagal na talaga yung mga trolls. Mm -hmm. I think the big difference between before and then is in the past, we used to have big trolls who are identifiable, who didn't hide behind the anonymity that technology affords us right now. Now we're dealing with a lot of coordinated anonymous trolls. And um, these people have, as uh, both Tony and Bernice explained, have been empowered, not just by technology, but by, of course, the creators themselves, those mm -hmm. who stand to benefit. Mm -hmm. So that, the challenge is how do we deal with the trolls? We always say, starve the trolls, ignore them. And that's true if for your sanity, for your, the sake of your mental health. Mm -hmm. If you can't um, deal with them, then just ignore them. Mm -hmm. However, there are also other ways no, of uh, dealing with the trolls. So one, don't stoop down to their language. But at the same time, if you feel that, you can just call them out and then just exit right away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So leave an, a message or a fact check or the, fa the, the correct information there and then exit. and then. Just prepare yourselves that you would be trolled again, or there would be, or they'd actually follow you to wherever you are. Mm. But these are ways <coughs> that we can we can begin. Um, also, to I know, in the same way that the platforms have a lot of accountability there, we should also use the platforms mm. to report abusive behavior. I think a lot of Filipinos still just ignore that. They don't. But let it slide. Oh, let it slide. Bahala na, <coughs> and, and that's not good. Mm. Mm. Kasi kadalasan yung inaction natin, kakulangan ng action, is what allows this, these exactly. things to, you know, you know per perpetuate itself, di ba? Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, earlier in, in the first panel, John Neri was talking about how uh, we should not just fact check but message check in an institutional way, you know, and then he talks about, you know, how civil society, you know, but a coordinated effort. Is that something that can be done uh, in, in, in this country? Are, are we ready for this? How can we do it, Yvonne? Uh, let me take on the first que that question <laughs> yeah. first because I'm a fact checker. Totoo napakalaga ng fact checking a function. Because every time there's a wrong information, you have to put out the correct information as a form of counter speech. Yeah. And you don't want it to, you know, continue, especially if there are what we call data voids, data deficit, kakulangan ng information. You have to plug that in. Yeah, but when, it's when true. there's a vacuum, kasi yeah, no? it's a vacuum. Yeah. Diba yun yung nakakatakot? Hinahanap mo, wala namang alternative. So yun yung paniniwalaan mo. Tapos mm. pa ulit ulit. It becomes mm. believable. It believable. becomes like the yeah. truth for people. But it's very important for people to also exercise other means. And that's like, simple lang message check, eh, diba? Sa umpisa pa lang, you already begin to question the message that you get every day. Ah, kanino galing? Diba? Kanino galing yung message? Galing kay Beshi, galing kay Momshi, ganon. <laughs> but, saan na nakuha? Mm -hmm. Credible ba yung source mm -hmm. na yon? So these are things that, beyond fact-checking, sa umpisa pa lang, doon pa lang, um, ano, tapos sabihin natin nakuha nila sa medyo hindi ka nais nais sa source. Hindi nila alam, di ba? Kasi napunta lang yan sa Viber or sa Messenger. Then it's very important, Texas, to ask, to look at the message itself, to look for evidence. There is a statement. Sometimes you don't even have fact check. Is that statement mm -hmm. substantiated? Yeah. Right? So those are very simple things na beyond fact checking, what people can also do at their own or at their own level. So what can we do? Um, this second panel, that's what we're supposed to discuss here. Mm -hmm. what, what can we do uh, you know, to deal with this massive uh, machinery? Mm -hmm. uh, let, let me yeah. share our own experience. I'm, I'm also convening a group called the Movement Against uh, Disinformation, yeah. which actually also is also part of your question, which is that um, we, we also do both fact check. We, have lots of fa we don't do fact check because we have a lot of members who are fact checkers, but we also do message checking to make sure that uh, 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 we are able to to uh, disclose and and expose to the public uh, mm -hmm. the messages that this uh, uh, this information is is spreading. But our group is is broad, uh, so th that's the answer to the question. Yes, we can do it in the Philippines. It's quite mm -hmm. quite broad. It's non-partisan, uh, um, but it's also quite honestly heavily legal. Uh, we have many law deans that are part of the group uh, mm -hmm. and we have top corporate litigators that are part of the of the group uh, and lots of young lawyers that are not the usual suspects in these things that the usual suspects that have been fighting this for years of course human rights lawyers we've done this for you know it's, it's part of the what we've had to deal with over the past uh, five years but here we're working with a lot of young lawyers who just want to be you know to to change the, the situation so uh, we've actually a uh, uh, couple of months in the making, uh, but we're now rolling it out. We have several lines uh, of uh, of actions, of legal actions. Uh, this week was not seen the news uh, uh, focused under Secretary Badoy because of her statements, which are not new, but had a twist, an electoral twist, right? So that's very important to deal with it right now. She's always been all of this. Uh, red tagging and you know that type of thing, but this time she she brought it to the center of the election, which is an electioneering offense uh, aside from ombudsman offenses. But we're not stopping there because that's just yeah. you. Ha first of all, you have to hold accountable. It's the easiest to hold government people accountable for for um, misinformation uh, because uh, they have accountabilities under our law to tell the truth. Not to harm anyone, right? I mean, mm. red tagging, as we always say, moves quickly from online to real physical violence mm -hmm. to actual deaths. My, my client, Chad Boak, is an example okay. uh, of that. I mean, um, but we're not stopping there. Um, I can't go to details of what will come up, but there will be cyber libel uh, complaints uh, against, uh, not just under Secretary Bader, but specific individuals that are kind of notorious. Uh, um, Other government officials or uh, non-government? I can't say right now, but some non-government. Oh. Some many? government and non-government. A few. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> What's a few? 
four, <laughs> five, seven. Uh, we're we're trying to be institutional because yeah. we don't we don't want don't want to be personal. So, we're, but you know, in our system, you have to file against person against persons. But we wanted to 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 change the institutional response. I mean, to to these things. I mean, so um, for example, on NTFL CAC, right? We we see that General Parlader, the third general, has been we basically. Uh, disowned by his top superiors already because of the kind of statements he has been, he has been making. Um, uh, you filed mm -hmm. something against Perlade? Uh We'll see. We'll okay. see if, see if uh, no. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I can until they actually filed. Because okay. the reason is until they actually signed by the complainant and filed, we we really uh, uh, shouldn't talk because mm. uh, you know always at the last minute some some might, might change their their minds because of the risk involved in all of this. Uh, we're planning Supreme Court actions also. Um, you would have, uh, you know, we'd have local government people there, you can guess, that might be willing to file certain things. Uh, and it will not just be on, on red tagging. That's the most obvious because of the harm it causes, but, but other fake news, not harm. Importante kasi na kailangan may harm, di ba? Yes. Uh, you know, the one thing here, I think all of us are all freedom of speech advocates and freedom of yes. press advocates. So, so for, for me, very important yung harm that that mm. the trolling causes, di ba? Parang, if it's asar-asar lang, parang, ganyan naman ang buhay. <laughs> ng, ano, yun ang, ano. you, you, you can let it slide. Oh, you can let, let, oh, let those things harm. slide, okay. di ba? Yung mga, mga paano-ano, pero, uh, but the, the one that causes harm to reputation, to lives, to property, I think it's very important. So we're doing that whole range um, in, in the next three, three um, in the next three weeks, I mean, uh, but months in the, in the making. Uh, we're figuring out how also best, and I, I said it already, how to to bring in social media uh, platforms into these cases so that they can accelerate the way they implement their policies. We've engaged with social media. Their policies are generally okay. Their community policies are okay. You can't complain, mm -hmm. right? I mean, in fact, you can even, from a free speech point of view, you can actually complain that it's a bit... Uh, you know, I once wore a shirt, you know, all men must die, which is from Game of Thrones. Like, if you watch Game of Thrones, you know that. Uh, I was, like, suspended because I was wearing a shirt of Game of Thrones, right? Uh, I said, but why can't you, why can't your AI find this? Chad Book is a terrorist, you know what I mean? And this uh, they just went on and on for years, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, but a single T-shirt that all men must die, which is from Game of Thrones, and a Game of Thrones T-shirt is... is noticed by its monitors or uh, so we want to engage with social media ideally it's it should be through negotiation right it should be okay these are the things uh, that you should do we've done that we've also written we've written and we've um we've uh, uh, given a list of sites uh of uh um um both sites, pages, even individuals where you can actually see what they call inauthentic behavior or coordinated mm -hmm. inauthentic behavior. But they're really just, they're very slow. I'm just, it's just amazing to me how slow they are. And they actually say the policy is 24 hours, 48 hours, I mean, you know, but they're really very slow. So uh, we're, we think that maybe if you can find some kind of legal action that can include them, uh, YouTube acted very fast in the case of uh, Senator Pangilinan, but Senator Pangilinan had to file the cases okay, first, right? Marlika. And then YouTube pulled down everything uh, uh, after that. So we didn't do need to do that. We, we certainly don't want to close down social media because from a free pitch point and from the point of view that we, yeah, yeah, that, there's that's a lot not of good want, yeah. can do. So that, that's not about it. It's about mm -hmm. changing their own behavior so that those that are using them will change their behavior. There's some progress, like I like the new brigading uh, policy. The brigading policy of Meta is even, my understanding is even if the accounts are authentic, that's one of the sophisticated mm -hmm. things. I, I personally, when I'm trolled uh, in the hundreds, me and my group of interns or a group of lawyers that work with me, uh, uh, we go through every one to see if we can do something, right? And in the past, it were really inauthentic. They were like flowers and trees and that. But now they really are real people. Mm -hmm. they're, real, they're real communities. I mean, they're not, they're not as it used to be. But you know, you know that there's a hand behind them because there's coordination. They, they, 
you know, it's like there's a command and everyone posts the same thing, right? Uh, it's better English now than it used to yes. be, <laughs> quite honestly. Um, okay. uh, so um, level up you have to you have to watch out for that. And but again, I, my problem there is that even when you complain about that, it's gonna take a while, and the harm is done. What we want is that the immediate thing is is done. Like when I was uh, suspended. 24 hours lang naman mm -hmm. <laughs> for my t-shirt, di ba? Hindi na ako nag-complain kasi parang okay na lang yun para 24 hours lang naman na, na ano. So, I can, I can live with that, di ba? Because if that's, if a policy and then your, your AI, your artificial intelligence is able to catch, but it doesn't, eh? I know that it doesn't. I know so many people in my work as a human rights lawyer, uh, I just so many people that, they're like atrocious, di ba? Na, mm. Alam mo, mga, Walang kabisis basis pero talagang nandun pa rin at matagal pa rin nandun doon. Months after, nandun pa kahit kinumplain mo na. Mm -hmm. So yun, I think yeah. that's what we have to also... Y yung, twen uh, yung 24 hour suspension, ano yun? Badge of honors? <laughs> <laughs> Bernice, what, no. what, 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 what can we do? Hindi ka lang ginagamit ang t-shirt na yun pa. Hindi na ako nagpo-post. Ginagamit ko mo, hindi na ako nagpo-post with that. <laughs> Then, actually, nag-worry ako kasi hindi ako nanood ng games. So, <laughs> <laughs> hindi ako maka-identify. Well, I guess so, yung monitor o AI, hindi man yung Game of Thrones, ha? Di ba? <laughs> Bernice, yes. what, what can be done? Okay. Um, sa amin naman, in FMA, mm. what we do, kasi part of yung project then the initiative for media freedom, yung goal namin is to educate and to promote critical thinking sa so youth, ganyan. So, we wanted to explore in other formats. So, mm. instead of the, um, let's say, webinars, we do have that, yung mga webinars, activities, etc. But we also went with formats like comics. So, mm. we engaged with comic artists who wanted to also learn more about let's say information disorder and also at the same time they wanted to they're already kumbaga parang they're also aligned in terms of their free speak their freedom of expression advocates or they're also let's say gender and ict advocates ganun. Hmm. comics where do, we can read this we can yes, where yes it's in our website, oh, where, on uh, website. and also ano title? on social media Sige nga, let's see how catchy your title is <laughs> ng comics. actually what ano we did was we collaborated with comic artists like mm, for example yeah. si Tarantadong Kalbo we created <laughs> a, yes we created a, ano eh parang the inuman sessions na series ah, okay so the first one was really about what's fake news, ganyan. Mm. Tapos parang told in the perspective ng nag -iinuman. So parang okay. magkakabarkada, nag sila. Ba't ganun? Pag iniisip mo, Pinoy, inuman <laughs> 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 Yeah, well, okay. that's one of Bergana. them. Pero we also Wait, anong pangalan ng comics? Others. Anong title ng comics? Well, we just, we just ah, wala, wala call siyang... it lang comics on disinformation. Ah. Dapat may we... title kayo. <laughs> uh, well, hindi pa ganun ka-catchy. So we were okay, trying okay. it out first eh, to ah, see okay. na if people Sige. would take. So, Plus, we also had yung sa historical distortion. Mm -hmm. um, kasi that was also leading to yung nangyayari with yung, for example, martial law, anniversary, tapos yung mga Wikipedia warriors din natin. Yun, mm -hmm. So, medyo na feature doon. Tapos, gender disinformation through kay Marian Hukom naman. So, ayun din, yung din naman sa mga kababaihan. Kasi, most of the times, um, gender disinformation, it's a form of an online gender-based violence na um, attack, especially mm. in women. Um, I think, like, si the Senator Laila de Lima yan. Ito yung mga, for example, kung, ang sad to say, pero yung mga case studies on gender mm. disinformation. So, we have mm. yung comics na to. Um, we also have from Kiko Machine, from Overheard Comics, um, tapos si Kapitan Tambay. We also created on privacy and data protection kasi these are also connected, ano din eh, parang they're connected um, yung parang themes na to or yung topics na to on how information disorder can also proliferate. Mm -hmm. so, Tapos we wanted to make it in a humor, parang kumbaga nakakatawang way. Yeah. At, kasi it's more, parang may emotional take yung audience or at least meron yeah. silang, oh, it's G funny. Ganyan ang Pinoy, oh, di ba? You have yeah. to lighten That's things up yes, a bit. Yes, eh. oh. to make it relatable right, right. Kasi it's yeah. hard na straight up na, hindi, ito lang yun. Oo, Parang, pag masyado kang seryoso, you don't yeah. reach people. Oh. Oo. Yeah. So that okay. was the one of the things. So she also created songs. Um, mm, kaya ano naman to, songs. The Borachos. So, very... <laughs> Grabe yung mga pangalan. I'm sorry, the names are really... Okay. So we collaborated songs. with them. Yeah, two songs. So okay, anong um, title ng songs? Kamalayan. Okay. That's also the name of yung album nila, actually. Okay. Tapos the other one is Saisay ng Salita. 
Okay. So we intentionally wanted it in Filipino so that you know, mas catchy, mas madaling kantahin. Mm-hmm. It's Bakantahin not sample. Bakantahin nyo sa Ben and Ben para maras ben. Ben. <laughs> We wish you. Hindi <laughs> 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 ko pwede. I know. Oh, oh, pero tayo, oh, pwede. Pero bago ah. kantahin ni Ben and Ben, ben sample muna. Alin? Ikaw, ikaw kumunta ka. Naku, maka ma-murder ko yung song nila. Never mind. Diba alam, may abogado naman dito. I can take care of you if you murdered Yvonne. Pag nadagdagdag ako dun sa, kasi nag Bernie's talking about formats. As you know, ang... Kasama ako dun sa isang fact-checking collaboration na tinatawag na Check.ph. Right. And this was uh, launched um, during the 2019 midterm election. It's really an ad hoc col- collaboration mm-hmm. to fact-check uh, election-related misinformation. So we relaunched for it on May 2022 with uh, more partners. We had 14 before, now we have 34. And that includes civil society. At kagandahan niyan ay dahil sa maraming partners, ang daming ideas lumalabas. So we have one partner ang akademiya at bayan kontra sa disinformation na naglalabas din aside from the fact checks na infographics comics mm. in black in color and in black and white ang nakakatawa it's so ang taas ng pass on rate mm. i had to prompt See, their yeah. one of their coordinators uh-huh. to say lagyan mo ng label nyo kasi walang copyright nakakomics ah, lang okay okay diba para alam oh, ng tao yes. para they can approach you and get yeah. ano well, Taka, anong, yeah. tayo, anong name ng comics um, iba iba okay. kasi it's mostly on the historical distortions uh, the Marcus oh. uh, denialism diba oh. the Marcus Smith Maraming pero yung, yung comics nyo parang seryoso pa rin itong or, sa abakada to ay, hindi, okay. ano to ano na siya uh, ano yeah. na may humor na okay. may humor na yeah. yung iba serious pero iba may humor kasi oh. it's also executed by different artists that the uh, abacada the the civil society group taps so maganda tapos they're printing it at pinapamudmud nila sa grassroots mm-hmm. napakalaga no kasi mahirap na nasa online lang yeah. right? right we all know that misinformation yeah. also oh, proliferates we, we may be the social media capital but so many people are not are still online yeah. like mm-hmm. we know maybe about 25 percent to mm-hmm. a third are yeah. still not online and then one of the things na napansin namin na effective talaga yung video fact checks Kasi yeah. previously, hindi tayo nagpa-fact check sa ano, kadalasan ay text lang, texto. Mm-hmm. At then we move towards yung may infographics, no? May mm-hmm. infographics. The infographics are still very powerful as ano, but video, iba yes. talaga ang Pinoy. ba Number agree. one talaga tayo oh. all over the world pagdating sa consumption ng video. So, um, at in, for CheckPH itself, the collaboration, what we did is yung mga fact checks nila, we convert it into videos, verticals. Mm-hmm. Vertical sh- shorts. Diba kasi yan yung in eh, para for yes. mobile friendly. So nakakalog siya ng mga half a million views. Wow. Not, va- yeah. not bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But we have one partner. So ang probe. Galing ng probe, ginagawa nila yung kasi may archival sila. Doon nila kinukuha yung mga videos. And mm-hmm. then yung nagpupush ng ano nila sa, nar- uh, sa video fact checks nila ay social media influencer. Si... Aunt Julie, si McCoy Dubs. Yes, ah, McCoy si Dubs. Uh-huh. So you can very okay. imagine how this resonates with, ano, with, with the crowd. Yes. So napakalaga, the, we were talking about this uh, with Bernice a while ago before we came on board, to be innovative mm-hmm. and to also fight. I mean, kung anong form na lumalabas yung misinformation, to yes. also be there. Not just in that platform, but in the format na hindi bastos o hindi mm-hmm. peke. Yeah, to, to fill the vacuum in a way. Yes. Uh, uh, interesting. Ah, so, com- again, comics, uh, video fact check. Tapos, McCoy Dubs. That's a, McCoy Dubs you know, for Pro, uh, Aunt yes. Julie. Mm-hmm. Aunt Julie. At may kapatid pa si Aunt Julie. Alam nyo ba yan? <laughs> check nyo. <laughs> <laughs> Tap her too. Pero this is, uh, ano, ano yeah. to ng Pro, which is our partner. Oh, so, but it's interesting, di ba? The, the humor that, that's needed to lighten things up a bit. Yeah. To medyo, parang, it, uh, at the risk of sounding so, mali eh, yung sabi mong, parang binababa hindi binababa hindi pwedeng condescending yeah. hindi, hindi binababa yeah. what i mean is um parang you know to make it more palatable to make it yes you know because it, relatable yeah, relatable, yeah, relatable. Yeah. Because, yeah. Because, yeah. kami mga journeys di ba nagdo newscast kami pag seryoso kami masyado minsan hindi kami pinapakinggan oh, exactly. ngumiti lang kami ng konti magpatawa kami exactly. pinapakinggan na kami yeah, parang sure. ganon di ba mm-hmm. that, that, i guess that's how that's that's why you're going that way mm-hmm. B- maybe because mm-hmm. you realized after why na kapag masyado kayong seryoso when when the output the product, the material is too serious. You don't, I mean, ik- di ba? Half a million. Kailangan pa rin natin yung serious. Yeah. Pero, oh, yun nga, yeah, no, no. content, yeah, oh, oh. content, yeah. Oh, yeah. content is the same, yeah. but yeah. I think the delivery. From, there, from, there, yeah. you from yung anchor mo, is, uh, right. the serious, right. Right. it has to be really well Definitely. researched, di ba? Yeah. Yes. And then how do you now push that in different formats on different platforms? Di ba? Napasubo akong mag- 
TikTok. Manood. You're on TikTok? No, manood lang. Grabe dito. Well, ayoko pa kasi, ano, I still have to figure out na how hindi siya pwede gumi. Ayoko pa. Ayoko pa. Eventually, kasi I think we have no choice if you want to be, to be, ano, but I, 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 I need to time to like. I need I need time to develop the concept and, and lang work time. with young people. Wala nang time. 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 But um, uh, and of course, of course, YouTube longer. Nadi pa na na ano? But you know that really is the one that works in in this in this format. And I mean, and so so kung masadyo kang serious, talagang hindi ka. Ano, di ba? Hindi ka papakinggan. Pero alam mo yung, ano, kailangan really short. I was in a conversation with some, ano, behavioral, ano. They used to say na ang attention span daw natin for social media, dapat daw 10 seconds. Tapos naging goldfish, 8 ba? 9 seconds yung goldfish. Ngayon daw, 2 seconds. 2 seconds, oo. So parang kung di mo mag-catch in 2 seconds, sorry ka na. To add to that, so di ba, kanina I was saying na ngayon, one hour, dati ang mga shows sa TV, one hour, ngayon 30 minutes. At hindi full 30 minutes yan kasi may commercial load ka, so minsan 24 minutes. And that is long. A voice report, a package, if it's 2 minutes and 30, ang haba. Gawin mong 1.15, But full pack, okay ka doon. Homilies, di ba? Di ba, Dean? Hindi naman, hindi naman sa pari kayo, pero di ba, eight minutes daw. Yung tin, tinuturo, as yeah. mahisig, dapat eight minutes ang homily. Uh -huh. ang, ang mga advertise, ano, mga ads, 30 seconds before, di ba? Uh -huh. Ngayon, Ngayon no? the, the shorter the better, 15 shorter, seconds. The, better seconds. Yeah. the sound bite, uh, for, for TV, 12 seconds, sometimes better kung eight. Di ba? So it's really again, it's really attention span. That's why you're saying the video, the video shorts. Na yon, how long? They're just because it it tries to explain, parents. So it's about about four, normally under three. I think that's still long. But however, ang napansin natin, it also depends sa audience. Yes, there's some audiences. Oh, okay, parin yung long form, di ba? Or as long as it's well written and well edited, that's okay. Compelling, talaga dapat. Mahalaga yon. But for yung mabilisan, lalo ko sa mobile binabasa, kailangan shorts talaga. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Given the internet, you know how spotty sometimes. No, I don't see. Okay. Um. So you know, wow. I I got so much from you already. You know, it's so interesting what what you guys are doing. But is there is there more that you can do or you know what kind of help do you need you know how can people help you you know what 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 else can we look forward to uh we, we dean without you spilling the beans on who you you're going to focus well, so again actually uh well, so for example yung mga partners natin sa mad dun sa us kasi mga filipino groups they nagmamas action actually sila sa in front of youtube in front of meta para that 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 is uh that is uh, communicated because I think I think warm bodies are also uh, uh, very important in terms of uh, no, no, in terms of social media uh, uh, companies and individuals that are to be to be uh, no. you know one of the things that we were asked earlier was mm -hmm. you know um, uh, do we have enough laws diba, to deal with this yeah. we actually have uh, yeah. uh, I would say 95 percent complete na tayo doon Ah, so it's really just. Ah, well, lang ano kasi ang liability. To be honest, yung liability ng ano yung liability ng social media companies, di ba? Is not very clear, di ba? Gusto ko sa nasa na civil liability, financial liability. Para that you know, they you know they're doing this because, in fact, di ba? Clear naman yung analysis. Fake news, controversial things that that are posted attract more traffic for social media, di ba? Yung basic na na algorithm nila, di ba? So So you also want to know that that behavior can also attract lawsuits, can attract, de ba, financial penalties. I think important yun na nagawin. The struggle natin sa legislation is we do not want to give the national, the government, de ba, another tool against against free speech, free press, etc. We don't want to do that. Government regulation of social media. Yeah, government. It's going to be a nightmare. It's a nightmare. How are they going to do that? Like even even yung ano ano yung recent law pass on SIM registration. Yeah. That 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 is that has many problematic aspects. So I mean, maybe the basic about registering who you are. Okay, naman and no fake accounts. All of those basic, but but and dami na pasok don na violates right to privacy, di ba? Mm -hmm. uh, and contradicts the Data Privacy Act. So, we just passed the Data Privacy Act, which is quite a good law. And I mean, mm -hmm. hassle, because we have to, to adjust so many things to it. Uh, uh, but then suddenly, uh, ito na. So, I think yun, yun ang kailangan nating um, 
thing then. But otherwise, we have the right set of laws already. I think it's time to just use them properly. I think the social media companies have good community policies. Pero wala akong masabi sa mga community policies nila. Pero kailangan talaga silang, yun, yun, isa din yun pwedeng gawin ng maraming tao. Mm -hmm. I-engage yun. Pag nag-complain kayo, kasi may nakita kayong hindi dapat, di ba, nandun, uh, ituloy-tuloy nyo yung complain. Yeah. Hindi yung parang let it slide kasi oh, 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 oh. nandyan na, di ba? But that's a Pinoy thing. It's, oh. a, it's a Filipino culture thing. Yeah. Parang, um, you know, the, the 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 refusal or the yung ayaw mag-complain kasi oh, naka, exactly. na, ma maaabala ka or it will take forever which used to be the case yeah, anyway yeah. but now what you and uh, now what you say is yes file a complaint uh, yeah. and and pursue it mm -hmm. use, use it, you know, the laws that we have okay. use the laws that we have and invoke the community policies of those social mm -hmm. media ano you know just to to make the difference the, the, just to to show the difference, di ba? Uh, with, with usual media, with traditional media, di ba? Uh, and in, including new media like Rappler that has, di ba, followed journalistic ethics and protocols, editing, the basics of, of editorial decisions and, you know, you, right to reply and things like that, di ba? Di yun ang traditional way of doing things, di ba? Na kung, ano, I, I used to be actually chaired in, ano, uh, yung, uh, 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 ano to, um, yung press council, Philippine press council. Mm -hmm. uh, interesting ha, kasi I was chair for almost 10 years. Two or three cases lang kami. Kasi mm -hmm. wala talagang problema sa right to reply. It's a, yung, alam mo, yung PM, yung, yung, yung Philippine press council was just founded by the print uh, yes. newspaper. Uh, yes. To the PPI, di ba? Uh, so that kung may, may individual na na nasaktan na ano, or wants to side niya, <coughs> may right to reply siya, di ba? Uh, two or three cases. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, the same person. I couldn't remember who it is. Na ano? And and in both cases we acted, man. And and mm -hmm. solved, man. Siya na ano? In ten years, na nandudoan, de ba? Uh, that's why we said dun sa bill no ani. Actually, sa another parliamentary, a good friend of mine, uh, for former uh, the, the 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 former Senate President, the the, the late Senator Nene Pimental wanted a right to reply bill. Uh, we really told you know, there's no need for a right to reply bill because at least on newspapers, all, yeah, all of them really, yeah. Yeah, we really, reach out for really comments. do it. And oh. I think the broadcast Ma media Many of them more, don't want to have the right mm -hmm. to reply because they don't want to yes, reply. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, sige, Bernice and Yvonne, uh, what, else, uh, what else can you add? Yung sa batas. <clears throat> Alam mo ang problema sa ating kongreso ay kadalasan ang gusto nilang i-regulate yung content mm -hmm. and then i-penalize yung author. Yeah. But we're fighting a different ano, creature nowadays. The content yes. is not exactly the one who, who published it. It's not exactly the creator. There's really this unseen hand, mm -hmm. the enablers, and that's yeah. very difficult to trace even if you do message checking and source checking. Yes. And we know that um, you know we have had studies diba, by si Jonathan Ong, si Jason, uh, Cabanas, who have actually identified Fine. a whole infrastructure, a whole industry behind the industry. creation, the production mm. of false information and informatory yeah. pieces. Na ano. So if we have that kind of legislation, nakakatakot, di ba? Kasi you're punishing yung mga visible, yung mga, mm. yung mga pinakamaliit, yung down the, yes. ano na, nasa yeah. downstream yeah. na ba, yeah. kung baga. Yeah. So that's one thing. One thing that it, every time they have this piece of you know, hearings on another proposed legislation against misinformation and disinformation, naalala ko, di ba, umpisa na umpisa pa lang, di ba, nag-hearing na yung Senado, di ba, tinawag pa yan, mm -hmm. lahat, journalists, sila, mukha mm -hmm. At now, during then, the Grace Po Committee, the consensus was, we have enough laws, what we lack, was yung law to hold public servants or civil servants who per, you know, purvey false information accountable. Yes. Di ba? Ayaw naman yan ng, <laughs> ng mm. ehekutibo. So, those are things that, like, I believe in what Tony says. What we need to do is put the laws, the existing laws to good use, file cases against those. Some are long incoming. I hope, mm. buti lang, hindi pa prescribe. Pwede mm. pang magsampa yes, laban yes. dun sa mga ano. Yes. But you know, as far as platforms are concerned, the community standards are well and good. But there's one thing that always, you know, <coughs> grates on my nerve is their newsworthy, newsworthiness clause. Mm. What does it mean? Di ba? Alam natin yan. For Facebook, no? 
kapag ka ikaw ay politician, political party, government official, because you are newsworthy, we mm. don't take you, we don't demote your content. Yes, yes. We don't mm. demote your content. Mm -mm. They will do that kung talagang may actual harm na or potential yeah. harm. But do we wait until we have what yes. the, happened mm. to the U.S., the Capitol riots, mm. before they acted on Trump? So ayaw nila noon. Um, and that's something I feel na dapat, um, da dapat mas nuanced yung approach doon sa newsworthiness na clause ng, ng platform. Okay. You know, we're going to have to wrap this up in a bit, but uh, I, I just want... Okay, yeah, may questions. Oh, sige. Okay, <laughs> question muna. <laughs> uh, before we get your final words and before you wrap this up, so the question is, should individual false posts be countered by specific posts to disprove the false claims just... Ignoring them won't stop them anyway. Yvonne, take this. Uh, okay. Gan um, na yung like I said, uh, naniniwala ako sa oh. counter speech. Yeah. So, kailangan mm. for every false post, yes. dapat may katapat. Kaya lang sa dami ng, ano, ang daming mong beses, ulit-ulitin. Yeah. But that's very important. I think Copy-paste. Copy paste. I, I agree. Yeah, that's okay. what we have to remember. Kasi nga, they, you know, our disinformation experts strive on the illusory yeah. truth effect. Pa ulit 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 yes. ulit yeah. nagiging totoo. Exactly. So kailangan yung ating counter speech pa ulit ulit ulit, 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 ulit din yeah. kahit na mm -hmm. nagsasawa na tayo. So so that's very important. But at the same time, kailangan ma-complement yan ng bigger picture ng analysis ng kung ano nangyayari talaga yes, sa yes, disinformation yes. natin, mm -hmm. the disinformation mm -hmm. landscape mm -hmm. para maunawaan ng tao at for policy makers, alam nila rin kung sa at for civil society and the whole society kung paano interventions Mm -hmm. ang, ang gagamitin. Yeah. Bernice, you want to answer that question also? Uh Oo, -oh, kasi um, maganda yung point na sinabi na yung mm -hmm. countering na, for example, for every, let's say, post is may counter post. And dyan din pumapasok yung how we can be involved eh. Kasi it doesn't have to be, nandun naman yung studies, nandun yung fact checks, you can, ano din on that. But you can create content that can counter. And that, mm -hmm. and the same way, kung hindi man to create the content, you can share. The ones that are verified, the ones that ito, that counters certain yung yeah, disinformation, malinformation, etc. And very important is for uh, families. Kasi tayo sa kamit, fact checkers tayo, yes, uh, debunking, verification. Uh -huh. Advertising PR firms, uh, we should hold them to to assert to their to their standards. Mm -hmm. uh, and a long, long time. Mm -hmm. Okay, Bernice. Parang <clears throat> ano, just to add na rin, uh, we shouldn't forget the agency din natin in using, mm -hmm. for example, the platforms, in going online, ganyan na. What you also bring out there, sana yun din yung gusto mong makuha. Parang ganyan, di ba? Hindi yung, ano eh, parang nakakalimutan, ay, it's always ganito, or it's ganito, magsala, na whatever, ganyan. Lahat tayo, meron tayong, ano din dyan, may at stake, at meron din tayong responsibility, at dapat din nandun tayo. And, um, earlier on, nag-uusap kami ni, ano, ni Yvonne about yung dun sa yung kahalagahan ng communications. And maganda yung point na sinabi ni Yvonne earlier, yung sa circles of influence. Yung family There's spheres of influence, mo. yes. Oo, oo. Yung communications, yung talagang, yun nga, you don't talk down, you have a conversation. Sometimes mas dun nagko-convert or sometimes dun pa nas nag na, ah, okay, mali pala yung naitindihan ko una. And that's okay. Uh, so, di ba, parang hindi yung parang kasalanan mo eh, ganyan yung alam, sisihan agad or magagalit mag, mag, kayo sa isa't isa, hindi na kayo mag-uusap. That's already a breakdown and that doesn't solve anything. Mm -hmm. So parang knowing yeah. that and being also aware then of ourselves, how we, kasi sometimes, like ako personally, so I forget na, wait lang, sino ba yung kausap ko? Kailangan, nag-uusap ba talaga kami? Or am I just talking down? Or am I just, mm -hmm. ano, um, lecturing? <coughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> ganun. Yeah. So, Yon. So, yung active na communication, that's very important. And mm -hmm. I think, yun din. Parang, I hope it's something then that people don't forget na yeah. tao din yung may agency in terms yeah. of support. Uh -huh. Well, to add to your point about communication, you know, earlier at the beginning of the first panel, and I was addressed, I, I addressed this to the students, the Ateneo Com students who were required by their professors <laughs> to attend this lecture. Thank you so much for being here. As if may choice kayo. At may deliverables <laughs> daw, sabi ng isang teacher nyo, ah. But anyway, uh, ang sabi ko kanina nga is napaki-importante yung active listening. Yeah. Ang active listening is uh, yung, yung iniisip mo, yung opinions mo, 
lahat ng thoughts mo, lahat ng emotions mo, you get it like this, di ba? And then you bracket it and set it aside literally because that's the only way that you can really listen, di ba? Mm -hmm. That's active communication. That's what you're talking mm -hmm. about. So that we can be empathetic, as, yes, as Yvonne was saying, so that we can hear what people are saying. Kasi if, kunyari, ngayon, uh, I'm, I'm saying something, tapos ang hindi ka nakikinig sa akin, tapos nag-perform ka na ng, <laughs> ng own thoughts, opinions, so you, you won't hear, right, what I'm oh. saying. That, that's so important. So, communication, hindi lang one way, two way, dapat yan. Okay, Dean, yeah. Tony, kayo naman, I'm final Just words. two quick um, <clears throat> final points. The first is, uh, you know, this information uh, is harmful. And it's not really just <clears throat> in politics or in uh, election. We saw that in the pandemic. We see this in war, uh, Russia. Uh, Ukraine, uh, in our dispute with China, so much disinformation. Mm -hmm. uh, also, the climate change is my, my yes. issue very close to me. Grabe, we've fought uh -oh. this information also for for a long time. No, um, so that's the, the first point. The second point is uh, I do agree yung the importance of agency, the importance of really taking this seriously. But I think we, it's very important to also target the enablers, the big and the biggest enablers. The, the corporations, the platforms, uh, to some extent, kasi pag na fix, na deal with mo yun sila, di ba? Uh, things will just follow if you're able to deal with, uh, ano, like what we say in climate change, but we only have to deal with 100 corporations mm. to actually change their ways. Mm. And <coughs> so all, all our behavior is important, our individual behavior in, in the internet or like in climate change is important, but uh, let's also not lose the sight that there are big players here uh, uh, that are enabling this and that are profiting <coughs> from this uh, because of their business model and, and we need to also address that. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to say same property uh, and you are, like you said, figuring out how to um, bring in and engage more with the social media platforms but you are generally happy with the good community uh, policies. Um, if, uh, Bernice talking about the comics no, as a very uh, smart I think it's a very smart, uh, a lighter way to deal with this. Uh, the Inuman Session series of um, Tarantadong Kalbo, Kiko Machine, Overheard Comics, Kapitan Tambay, and dami na. Um, and then um, the songs, na ayaw mo naman bigyan ng sample. <laughs> Pero sabi ni Dean Tony, ask Ben and Ben to do it. Yvonne, talking about Check.ph, uh, launched in 2019. And from 14 to 34 partners no, for this 2022 elections. It's very, very interesting. Um, and of course, comics again. Um, and the video fact checks that you do, yung mga shorts, mm -hmm. no? And then we talked about attention span and how we need to uh, stay within that. And then how you use uh, uh, social media influencers also, like McCoy mm -hmm. Dubs, Auntie Julie. And right now, I can't remember yung kapatid ni Auntie Julie. I'm sure somebody will comment now and say, sino ba yun? <laughs> Nakalimutan ko na yung pangalan. But anyway, okay. And then, um, and uh, interesting, yung sinabi ni uh, Lodi, Idol Yvonne, Professor <laughs> Yvonne, itong ano, pre-banking, inoculation, parang bakuna. Bakuna lang to. Unahan na natin ito. Unahan mo na. But do it nicely. And Dean Tony, you know, kanina, di ba, I said, di ba, how you deal with trolls, and then, sinasagot nyo rin, di ba? And sabi ko, so may sarili kayong trolls, sabi mo, hindi, angels ang tawag ba? <laughs> we all have our guardian angels. So anyway, exactly. so, we, we need to say thank you. We need to wrap this up and say thank you to our speakers uh, today in this uh, second panel. So, uh, earlier, of course, we had John Neri, Cheryl Soriano, and Jem Lanuza. And for this second panel, we want to say thank you so much to Dean Tony Lavinia. Hanggang ngayon, Dean pa rin ang talk sa sa'yo. <laughs> Everybody calls you Dean. Um, Bernice Soriano, Foundation for Media <coughs> Alternatives. And uh, Yvonne Chu, uh, professor, veteran, journalist. Uh, saludo na talaga ako sa'yo. And to the students uh, who are watching um, uh, and, and, well, attending because you were told to by your professors. yeah, And others <laughs> besides that. We thank you very much. Uh, for spending your uh, Saturday morning with us. And um, we hope that uh, you did listen uh, and that you did active listening as we suggested very nicely, Tanina. And we hope that you did your note-taking also by hand. Sabi ko, ha, by hand. Um, and we do hope that your takeaways um, will empower you to engage uh, in this battle for the truth and uh, a few more thank yous before we go so one big thank you sorry i have to say one big thank you one big fight uh, one big thank you to the administration of the leola schools headed by vice president maria luz vilches I, I pronounced that correctly. Yeah. The University Committee on Occupational Safety and Health, led by Dr. Norman Dennis Marquez, 
the Central Facilities Management Office, and the School of Social Sciences Dean, Dr. Charina Saloma Akpedonu, for their support. We'd also like to thank um, another uh, one big thank you to the Association of Communication Majors, or ACOM. Wala pang ganun eh, when I was in college. <laughs> Com ka ba? Or ACOM major? No, IS eh. <laughs> But I took com electives. Mm. Uh, the Multimedia Information Resource Laboratory, or how do I pronounce this? Mirlab? Mirlab? Kasi wala pang Mirlab nung nasa college kami. At isa pa itong wala pa nung nandito ako sa Ateneo in the late 80s. The Eugenio Lopez Jr. Center for Multimedia Communication, Dr. Jozon Lorenzana, and the production team and staff of the Department of Communication. And lastly, we are very grateful to the Aveliana family uh, represented uh, this morning, and he's still watching, by the way, by uh, Tito Toto's son, Manong Joey. Uh, para kaming honorary cousins kasi. Without whose support, this lecture would not have been possible. So, Manong Joey, thank you so much. And thank you all once again. We hope you can join us next time, next year, for the uh, fourth Jose Totoy Aviliana Memorial Lecture. And by then, here on campus, I'm so sure of that. Uh, so, have a great day, everyone. And... Uh, May God keep us all in his standard care till he brings us together again. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you. Thank okay, you. Thank you.